Welcome to the British Wildlife Centre. My name's Andy Rouse. I'm a professional wildlife and aviation photographer and also a park cameras ambassador. And I'm here this morning to tell you about the amazing 1DX Mark II, this. The amazing sound of the 1DX2. Now, it's got a hard act to follow because the 1DX is a fantastic camera, but my needs have changed in the last few years. Now I need to have one camera that lets me take great landscape pictures, news, aviation, sport, and wildlife. No matter what I get asked to do on a particular day, I need to have one camera that does everything. And the 1DX2 delivers. A lot of the features of the 1DX have been enhanced. The autofocus, the high ISO, they've taken it to another level. They've got loads of new features to make it easier to use. They've put great video in. We can shoot 4K DCI, which is the best quality 4K. 100 frames a second, super slow-mo. It's also much nicer to hold. It's got a deeper grip, much bigger joystick on the back. It's just great. So I'm gonna stop talking about it. Let's go and see some wildlife and let's put this camera to the test. Come with me. Well, here we are, we're at the otter enclosure and it's where we're gonna do a big test on the 1DX2. Um, we do all of our beta testing here of all the cameras because I need to learn the camera, get all the settings right, work out what they do, and this is the best place to do it. And it's also somewhere where we have a lot of fun with these otters. Love it. Whee! Now, as I said earlier, one of the new things of the 1DX2 is its improved autofocus. And the new AF locks on much quicker and, and it stays locked on. So I'm going to shoot two and a half thousandths of a second at f5.6, ISO 10,000, and try and get a sharp picture of this otter running towards me. And I've got every confidence in this camera being able to do it. So let's get on with it and get down. Right. The trick with these otters is to get really low and hopefully nailing a few pictures. So it's about time now to bring in the superstars and to bring in the Elwood. Where's Elwood? That was a good one. You can hear the motor drives very fast. It's 14 frames a second. But the interesting thing is you can hear the buffer is not locking out. Uh, and what I'm doing basically when the otter is running, I'm adjusting the focus to try and get it over its head as much as I can. So I'm not just blasting and hoping, I'm trying to somehow get close to it. So let's do a few more. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick shot assessment. Sharp. Oh, sharp, razor. I'm just calling for my lovely assistant, Mark from Park Cameras here. He didn't think he was gonna be on, see? He would have shaved if he did. So let's go and shoot some video down here. Okay, so I'm all set up to shoot some video. I'm in 4K, 50 frames a second, you know, so I've got a very sturdy tripod. I've got the tracking on. I'm just gonna line up one of the otters now and tell the camera to track it. And it's now tracking it very nicely, moving across. Yeah, look at that. And this is the good thing about this camera. You can actually keep the 4K on for 29 minutes. So it's not going to suddenly go off um, after 15 or 20 seconds. If you've got a CFast card, it's going to keep going all of the time. A lot of people are saying to me, Andy, is the dynamic range of this camera any better than any other Canon camera? Well, I've noticed that when I'm shooting with this camera, the latitude of the file, the way that I can take it in post-processing and brighten it, darken it, pull it apart, put HDR onto it, all these things that we do these days, the file is amazing. And to me, that's a true measure of dynamic range, how much you can mess with the file afterwards. And I have to say this camera, like this morning, I've been shooting the otters in really appalling conditions, ISO 10,000, very little definition. And I know that when they're running, I'll be able to pull up underneath the chin, some of the dark shadow areas, I'll be able to brighten them a little and there won't be any color noise in there and there'll be very little pattern noise in there. They will look really, really strong, sharp commercial pictures. Okay, so what I've done, I've turned the face recognition on for the video and I'm trying to get a video of the otter running now. It's quite impossible, but look at how that's tracking. Can you see that's tracking across the frame? It's amazing, it's picked it up straight away. I can dab it like that in the frame on the otter and that is the one now that it knows to pick up. Oh, that was a good one actually, right to the end. So actually to be able to get the face tracking to react and do this, I think it means I'm gonna be able to take some really nice otter footage and certainly when I'm in the wild, I'll be able to get some really nice stuff. And if we can shoot it then at 4K, it means we can take incredible stills from it as well because the 4K stills come out as about a 4096 pixel TIFF. So that's a 22, it's about 22 megabytes. So that's a really big TIFF. Right now, I'm a bit cold. It started to rain and I need a cup of tea and I need to dry off a bit because I'm full of mud. So I'll see you inside in just a minute. 
What I wanted to do was go over some of the features that I've been using today just to summarize because I get quite excited and forget what I'm talking about. So let's begin with the uh, high ISOs. The kingfishers I shot, you know, with ISO 25,600 or 16,000, these numbers that you would never consider before using because the files would just fall apart. There's a remarkably little noise for the ISO that it is. So that high ISO shooting has allowed me to get really fantastic images like the kingfishers and of course like the otters that you've seen today. So next on the list is the autofocus and I know that the 1DX, the predecessor, had fantastic autofocus. I've said that time and time again, I have, I'm sorry I'll say it again. The 1DX2 has taken it to another level, they have refined the autofocus, it's dual pixel autofocus, it's much more accurate, it's much quicker to lock on and the result of that is you get more pictures in a sequence and I used it the other week for doing some, uh, some RAF aircraft while they were being refueled. Um, it was fantastic in really low light conditions through glass it locked on straight away and it stayed locked on even when the tornado flipped upside down and went underneath us. So really fantastic autofocus and the great thing is the menus are exactly the same as last time, the same as all the other Canon cameras, it's the internals that have been tweaked and improved. So big thumbs up for the autofocus. Another great feature of this camera, of course, is the buffer. The buffer on here is amazing for RAWs. Um, I think I, I, I've never really managed to lock it out. Um, it, it's great to have that kind of buffer um, and it does make a difference to shooting. And of course, now we have a 14 frame a second drive. Okay, well, that's very, very powerful. But interestingly, when you shoot on live view, so if you're in live view mode, you get 16 frames a second and that is really mega fast, okay? Amazingly fast. Um, so again, the camera really delivers. There's a few features this morning of the camera that I didn't use that I just want to tell you about. The first one is a leveler that's inside the viewfinder. So when you look through, you can see if the camera's level. Really, really important when you're hand holding. Great that it's actually in the field of view. The joysticks are much, much bigger. They're much firmer and easier to get hold of, which is great. The camera now auto focuses at f8. What does that mean? Well, it means if I've got an f4 lens like a 500 and I put a two times converter on it, you know, so I get a thousand f8. In the old days, I could only use the center AF point. Now, with this camera, I can use all of the AF points that I select and move around. It's really great. I've been shooting a lot of grebes and stuff with that lately. It's been fantastic. Now, one last thing to actually tell you about is the exposure simulation. I can get the exposure on the screen at the back now. So rather than pointing, taking, and guessing, I can have it on a tripod. Perhaps I was doing some pictures of Tower Bridge. I was using um, an ND filter on the front for long exposure. Because I was doing it at night, the viewfinder went completely dark, but of course through the LCD it doesn't go dark. You can dial in the exposure, work out exactly what you want, and that way when you take the picture, what you see is what you get. And for me, that is brilliant because I just need to take the guesswork out of this and I need to nail the image. So a few little features. There's a load more. Actually, there's one more I forgot that's really useful. The ability to switch off all the menus. All you do is put your own favorite menus on with your favorite features and you can name them. I've got one called Photo, I've got one called Movie, I've got one called Landscape. And so the features of the camera that I use for those conditions are stored in those menus. That's all that's switched on in the camera. It's great. It means if I'm running around, I need to get to something quickly. It's right there, easy to do, easy to change. And proof that Canon have listened to photographers and what photographers want with the 1DX Mark II. Yeah, you're beautiful. Now you've noticed I'm quite enthusiastic about most things, but video with this camera I'm really enthused about because it means for the first time I can submit 4K clips to the BBC Natural History Unit, National Geographic and any other broadcaster so that they can use them. So this camera does shoot 4K DCI which is perfect for them um, and interestingly also you can obviously shoot full HD, 50 frame a second, stuff like that. I've been doing it an awful lot. You need the CFast card inserted into it that will then allow you to shoot up to 30 minutes of 4K video. So it's in one continuous lump. You can film a whole episode of a program in it. Um, if you've got other CF cards, it will let you shoot, but it's in short chunks. So that's the, 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 the first thing about the video. It's really great that it supports the best and latest formats. One of the things I really love about shooting with this camera is 100 frames a second slow-mo. I've been using it with Kingfishers. It's shot with full HD and it's backed up by all the autofocus capabilities of the camera. It's amazing and I love shooting it and I can see myself shooting a lot more 100 frame a second super slow-mo. So the 1DX2, I can't say anything else. It just delivers in every way. You can see the results of all this if you follow my blog or you follow my work on Park Cameras blog because I'm a Park Cameras ambassador, I believe in them 
Um, they've got two great stores, one in London, one in Burgess Hill, staffed by really friendly, nice people. I do a bit of training for them. These people know what they're doing. And perhaps the most important thing is their pricing is very, very competitive. So you, you know that when you ring them up, they're going to look after you in every way there is. And the One DX2 is going to look after you too. It's a fabulous camera, and I wholeheartedly recommend it to you. It's just absolutely brilliant. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Now, the key thing I really want to try on this camera is the new 20 megapixel sensor. We've been so used to 16 megapixels for so long from Olympus that I, I can't think of anything different. So we're going to try that out. We're going to compare it against its old predecessors. And in the meantime, we're going to have some fun taking some shots. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.